Well, hello there. Who are you? You're on YouTube, so you're vaguely modern, but then you're not watching celebrity gossip or cat memes, are you? No, you use the internet with taste, with foresight, and to better yourself. Not for other people's approval. You're not going to leave a comment on this video and be that overt. But you are here to be a better person, to do better. I can see that about you. I see you. I see all of your potential and how you're trying to improve the world around you with real care and love. Not everybody sees that like I do. I will help you realize all of your amazing potential. I will remove all of the obstacles in your way. If by remove all the obstacles in your way, we mean removing your lack of knowledge, let me help you learn about native plants. This plan for a native garden area is a tribute, if you will, to our favorite serial killer romantic, Joe Goldberg, and the first season of the show, You. Before we get to the ideas behind this garden, let's get real practical. Here are the specs for this native flower garden. The soil moisture being medium and the sunlight being partial, both walk that middle of the road line. But it's important because some of these plants like more sun and some like a lot less, but they all can meet in the middle on partial. And likewise, some plants like soil that's a little more dry, some of these other ones like it a little more wet, but they all will be okay with medium moisture. Great. Okay, so how is this garden a tribute to the Netflix show You, Season 1? Well, let's start with the shape of the garden, quite matching the shape of a certain forehead scar that someone got. Now, if the piece of land that you've got for your garden isn't this got in a car accident while stalking someone scar shape, I trust that you can make the necessary adjustments for the spot that you've got. Okay, so moving forward, there are a few colors that play really prominent roles in this season of the show. Green, 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 so much green. A green that is not very showy though. The green of the bookstore frontage, the green of Beck's shirt when they first meet, the green of Beck's throw pillow, the green and gold of Beck's bracelet jangles, Karen Minty, very green last name. <laughs> Karen Minty painting her toenails green. And of course, the pale, frightening, greenish lighting of a temperature and humidity controlled storage room for old and rare books. And for people. But also, red, 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 a red ladle, a red hallway at Joe's apartment, a red therapist's couch, a red hat that Beck wears when Joe cheats on Karen Minty. Um, a red master's golf hat that Joe wears when he's following Beck to the Salinger estate. Candace's hair, Candace's red lips, and of course, blood. Okay, so those are some of the main ideas here to this garden. But beyond just color, I'm also going to heavily tap into Joe Goldberg's presence. Joe isn't showy. He doesn't demand attention. He just blends right in, right? He doesn't draw much interest at first glance or at second glance. He's just an ordinary, easily overlooked Joe. You miss all that's there if you just glance once. But if you look too long, if you get too close, you will probably regret it. What he is, who he is, how he thinks, what he does, is all hidden. Hidden until it's too late. So, with all of that in mind, let's bring out the native plants. Come now, native plants! So, let's start by talking about the two plants on either side of this garden. I wanted to bookend <laughs> okay, this garden with not showy, very comfortable looking plants. 
plants that remind you of a nice comfy leather brown chair to read some books in. Plants that you might easily overlook because they are not immediately eye-catching. And yet, they both serve significant ecological roles for our native pollinator communities. Joe would know that. He'd know to overlook flash and sparkle for true significance. On either side in the front, I've got Sporobolus heterolepis or prairie dropseed. So this is actually um, a native grass. And so we often focus on native flowers that are lovely to look at or native trees, but it is foolish to overlook the native grasses as a significant portion of our country in its native state is grassland. In fact, there's this old um, adage, I guess you would say, of that uh, when our country was first settled by Europeans, you could get from the East Coast all the way to the Mississippi River without ever touching the ground. Like you could go through the trees, right? That was that much tree cover on the land. But in actuality, that might not be true because a really significant portion of our country, even from the East Coast to the Mississippi, is grassland. So I think sometimes we think grasses are sort of, you know, Oh, excuse me, boring, but they're actually really important. Um, there are all sorts of pollinators, insects, and birds that depend heavily on native grasses and mammals, actually. Uh, so prairie drop seed is this green color, a really nice green, actually. And so it not only meets our easily overlooked criteria for an homage to Joe Goldberg, but it is also in keeping with our green theme. Um, and also not to be overlooked, though, prairie drop seed is the host plant to a couple endangered butterflies and moths. And so what a host plant means is that the um, caterpillars of these butterflies and moths eat the leaves of prairie drop seed uh, as they grow up and mature. So uh, prairie drop seed then is part of the uh, butterfly and moth life cycle. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so we think about the pretty butterflies and moths and everything, but we have to also think about their offspring and where they're going to lay eggs and what those caterpillars are going to eat. And so prairie drop seed is a great plant for that. Um, it also itself uh, is endangered in five states. So it is a really, really great choice for supporting uh, both endangered species as well as regular old species. And so on either side in the back, I've got Carex fulpinoidea, or brown fox sedge, another easily overlooked native grass. But we've got a comfortable, non-threatening, green, brown, just like Joe, so comfortable to be with, so non-threatening, hmm. Uh, brown fox sedge is not endangered, uh, probably because it's really quite adaptable. Uh, although it likes more moisture than not, as you can see, it will do fine in a variety of moisture levels. It's really just a nice, solid grass. Um, and the reason it's called brown fox sedge is um, when it starts to make seed and stuff uh, later in the season, the top of it turns this brown that I guess looks a little bit like a fox's tail. I mean, I kind of don't think it does, but that is what is said. <laughs> Okay, so let's get to the Midland stuff. So I've got five different plants that will come up in an overlapping kind of way from early spring, April, to fall time, September, moving more or less from the front of the garden to the back. So let's start in the front. So first up is Trillium recurvatum, or prairie trillium. So the pictures that you're seeing are truly prairie trillium. Uh, while the video here is something so very similar called toad shade trillium uh, to give you an idea of what prairie trillium is like. So prairie trillium is a little taller than this toad shade. Uh, however, they both have a very similar looking flower. Um, and so I just don't happen to have a lot of uh, video footage of prairie trillium. Anyways, um, they both similarly... Uh, toad shade trillium and prairie trillium have a flower that is closed up and that flower never truly opens. Kind of like Joe Goldberg, right? Also, mostly what people notice here is the greenery, which is this comfortable, overlookable green. But when you focus in on that flower, you get closer, closer, 
closer. Whoa, what's that smell? Too late. That smell that you've got to be really close to smell is a smell similar to rotting flesh. Because the primary pollinators of prairie trillium are not beautiful floaty butterflies, but are instead carrion flies and carrion beetles, insects that feast on dead flesh. But you've got to be close to smell it. Are you noticing the color of that demure little flower? That dark red, that dark pool of blood red, a red that somehow reminds me of Benji in his post-mortem state. Mm. You can see why this is an homage to our murderous romantic Joe Goldberg, right? Next up, moving back in the garden, I have chosen a serum canadense, which is wild ginger. Yet another very easily overlooked beauty. It comes up as a nice true green, a strong and confident green. And yet, overlooked at first and second glance, its use to native insects and native plants, however, should not be overlooked. Joe would not overlook it. He would see past the regular unremarkable veneer and appreciate two things about this plant. First off, over time it can form a nice ground cover, which is pretty effective at keeping out the invasive and nasty garlic mustard. Secondly, there are some little flies that emerge from the ground in springtime, looking for a nice rotting carcass to eat, (laughs) an animal that maybe didn't survive the winter. Uh, This wild ginger flower, lying against the ground as it does, underneath the leaves is the rotting flesh color and when you get really close to it it has that rotting smell too perfect food for those little flies emerging that need it and you really have to get close 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 and lift up the regular commonplace veneer before you notice that it does actually even have a flower but look at that flower hidden from view but unique yes That same dark red wine as the prairie trillium flower. That same corpsey red. So that little flower that smells like death, when you're really close up to it, and is quite hidden from view, serves a really important purpose. So moving back again in the garden to the the middle of the middle, I have Jack in the Pulpit, or Erisema triphylum. So this simple, calm flower was chosen because mostly what you see is green. Green in keeping with all of the green in the show. A not unpleasant plant to look at, but it wouldn't stop you in your tracks, right? The flower, which is mostly green, can also shift to a purplish red, and it has a little hood hiding what it really looks like in there, right? There are male and female flowers. The female traps Uh, pollinators inside, making it difficult, but not impossible, to escape. So this ensures more successful pollination, but it also means possible death for any pollinator visiting the female plant. And although it's the female, in this case, that does the trapping and makes it hard for pollinators to escape, it reminds me anyways of Joe Goldberg trapping people. They only realize they might be trapped when it's too late. But there are some pollinators that get out of the female jack-in-the-pulpit, just like there are some people who escape Joe Goldberg unscathed, like Karen Minty. Uh, Later in the summer, jack-in-the-pulpits make a bright red fruit, which is great for various birds and animals to eat. That red, though, of the fruit starts to speak to that red theme of you, season one. So let's move back to one of the last plants in our garden here, royal catchfly, or Silene regia. Now, this is a very fitting plant for our garden. The red of it, quite obviously, is in keeping with the red theme of the show, and the red bloom of the royal catchfly should, although not guaranteed, match up with when that jack-in-the-pulpit puts up its red fruit. So suddenly a bunch of red will appear in this garden. And besides the red colored flower, 
which makes the royal catch fly a decent choice for a tribute to you, is the catch fly part of that name. What it refers to is how the royal catch fly makes a sticky substance that traps small insects on the plant, and then it releases a digestive enzyme. And that digestive enzyme is not there to give food to the plant. No, no, no. Joe doesn't kill because he wants to or because he needs sustenance. No, no. The digestive enzyme is there to defend the plant, to defend from insects that would eat or destroy the plant, which is why Joe Goldberg kills too, right? To defend, to protect, not because he wants to. (laughs) And then finally, our last plant in this garden, Silphium perfoliatum cup plant. So the yellow is nice because when you combine it with the royal catch fly, you get this yellow and red glow. And the cup plant and the royal catch fly will bloom. Their blooms will overlap for a while. And this is in keeping with that warm glow that the show has at times when things are going well. So when Joe first meets Beck, when Joe and Beck are in love and in sync with each other, there are these periods of time when the show's lighting positively has this warm glow. Mmm, it's so nice. Makes you think it might all work out. So the yellow of the cup plant with the red catch fly brings about that feeling. But also, it's called a cup plant because the leaves form these little cups with the stem that hold water. So where the stem and the leaves meet makes like a little cup. So various birds and insects use these little cups to get drinks of water. So that reminded me of Benji with his carbonated drink that he was trying to sell. It's the real deal, bro. But also the little cups holding drinks for various organisms reminds me of Joe altogether. He has a way about him that so naturally cares for chosen people, and he lies with ease to take care of certain people, and everyone just drinks it up. They drink up his lies and his deceptions. They drink up how caring he is. They drink it up easily. Well, except Peach. She did not drink it up. And drinking up his stories and the personality that he displays with ease makes him grow bigger and have more power, just like this cup plant with its drink cups. It can be anywhere from 5 to 10 feet tall. It can get big, powerful, just like Joe. So the entire garden here is easy to overlook at first with calming, comforting greens and brown, easily overlooked, demure little corpse flowers. It lulls you into a false sense of real security. What's there to look at here? And then the red jack and the pulpit fruit and the red royal catch fly catching insects that might harm it and killing them. And that cup plant ending up so big and so strong when you let it all of it overlooked until it's too late and wham you've got this amazing native flower garden that no one looked twice at before (laughs) plant native you 